Lemons by Melissa Savage. Chapter 4. Interplanetary Traveler. I think I've moved to Jupiter. Maybe Mars. It's not just that there's a wooden statue of a Bigfoot in the center of town, or that there's an actual resident Bigfoot hunter running around with a single business card stuffed in his pocket. To top it all off, the old man even owns a shop out on Highway 299 called Bigfoot Souvenirs and More. When I find out um, which I find out is where he goes after breakfast every day but Sunday. After this morning's bowl of bird food, we watch him from the front porch as he backs an old maroon station wagon named Jake out of the driveway and putters down 7th Street. What's with this town? I ask Tobin after the car takes the left with the stop sign and disappears around the corner. What do you mean? All this Bigfoot hullabaloo. He looks at me again, this time with his eyebrows wrinkled together. It's not hullabaloo, he says real serious-like. It's true. Haven't you heard of the, big, of the footage they got this way eight years back? I shake my head. The Patterson-Gimlin film? Nope. I examine my peeling nail polish like I couldn't care less, which I couldn't. They filmed a Bigfoot over at Bluff Creek on October 20th, 1967, Tobin says taking a seat on the yellow porch swing. I look up. You mean, it's really true? Of course it is. You think I'm making this up, he says. Like I'm the crazy one. And since that time, there have been hundreds of sightings all over, but no one else has caught one on film until now. He holds up his camera to show me. I'm going to be the very next one to do it. Patterson, Gimlin, and Sky. I'll be on the Channel 4 News and everything. I watch him, huff hot air on the lens, wipe with his bottom of the bottom of his red t-shirt. Then he squints through the, wind, the viewfinder, pointing it in all different directions, left then right, right then left, up then down. He huffs more air and wipes again. I go back to my fingernails. After I finish scraping off all the polish from my pinky, I look at him again. So can I ask you a question? He doesn't say anything like he's too busy concentrating on his lens to even bother with me. If they're really real, why is it hard to find them then? I ask anyway. Who? He looks up. Who do you think? The big feet. Foot, Tobin corrects. What? You don't say feet, it's foot, big foot. Singular, not plural. I roll my eyes. Big foot, I say. Why is it hard to find them? What are they hiding from? He puts the camera down and stares straight ahead, chewing on his bottom lip. People, he finally says, and starts squinting through the viewfinder again. Except this time, he points the thing right at me. Why do they hide from people, I ask the lens. Tobin lowers the camera into his lap and focuses on his dark blue sneakers. Because people can hurt you. I don't say anything. We sit on the swing in silence as he continues to huff and wipe. When he seems content that the lens is in the way is the way he wants, he turns to me again. Want to see something? I shrug. Well, I guess. First, you'll have to take an oath of ultimate secrecy, he warns me. For what? Can't say. You have to swear ultimate secrecy for an eternity or longer before I can disclose any further top secret information. Can you do that? What's longer than eternity? What? Eternity is the longest. There's nothing longer than that. He sighs, a blast of air in my direction. Can you promise you, will, you won't blab or not? Chapter 5. One high-tech operation and a bag of lawn fertilizer. This is the Bigfoot Detectives Incorporated's headquarters, Tobin tells me over his shoulder, wiggling a key in the lock of Charlie's crumbling garage out back. I promised eternal secrecy for this, I ask. It's a garage, and barely even that. It's one big bad wolf's blow away from being a pile of boards. That's just my cover. The key turns. Outside, it may look like your typical garage, but inside, it's highly technical. Totally confidential, cryptozoological operation. I give the place a once-over. There are shingles missing on the roof, and the white paint is peeling. I think it might even be leaning to the left a little. Tobin turns to face me before he opens the door. Ultimate secrecy, he repeats. You promised. 
It was like five minutes ago. You don't think I remember? Tobin pushes the door open and a stifling, ripe stench slaps me in the face. An aromatic blend of baking garbage from the overflowing cans, gasoline, um, gasoline from the lawnmower, and a bag of lawn fertilizer leaned up in one corner. I hold my nose as he pulls a battered string hanging from the rafters. A single stark bulb shines down on a wooden desk in the back corner. It has a torn up old copy of Grant's Atlas of Anatomy under one leg to keep it from wobbling. On the desk are one green phone, some kind of tape recorder, a rusty lamp, and a carved wooden sign with shaky letters on it. Bigfoot Detectives Incorporated, Tobin Scott, founder and president. This is your high-tech operation? I pick up the wooden sign and study it. Charlie made me that for my birthday last year, Tobin informs me. I set it back down. He straightens it. What's that? I point to the tape recorder next to the phone. That's an old answering machine from Charlie's office. Now that he's retired, he lets me use it. You know, so I don't miss anything, any important sightings when I'm out on another call. Oh, I say. So who else is in this ink of yours? What do you mean? He slips the camera strap over his head and places the camera carefully on the desk. Ink, I say. It stands for incorporated, right? More than one person? Who else is in your ink? There isn't anyone else, he tells me, shuffling through a yellow legal pad filled with scribbles. I don't need other people. So you're saying it's just you then? Yep. Then it's not really an ink, it's just you. He looks at me. I guess, he shrugs. I mean, unless, well, what? Nothing. He shuffles more papers on his yellow pad. No, what were you going to say? I suppose, I mean, I guess I could use an assistant to help out. You know, Summers can get busy with calls about sightings and counters and stuff like that. And of course there will be expeditions. So you're saying you want me to be your ink? Yeah, I mean, you know, only if you want to, you, you could if you want. I think about it. I guess I can be your ink, I tell him, at least while I'm here. Tobin stops shuffling his papers, looks at me over his glasses. You're leaving? That's the plan, I tell him, picking up a battered spiral notebook with the words logged sightings scribbled on the front of it. I'm going home. When? He takes the notebook from my hand and puts it on the ba back on the desk in the same place I found it. That's still a work in progress, I say, looking around the garage. But one thing I know for sure is that I don't belong here. Chapter 6. Orientation. If we're going to make you the official new assistant here at Bigfoot Devices Incorporated, you'll need a new employee orientation. Orientation to what? The mouse traps or those old fishing poles in the corner? I look around again. What else is there to know? Well, for starters, you'll need to take the Bigfoot Detectives Incorporated oath. Raise your right hand and repeat after me. I already promised the whole ultimate secrecy thing. Is this really necessary? He raises his right hand and waits for me to do the same. I do, but only after I give him my best eye roll. I, Lemonade Liberty Witt, promise not to blab any top secret Bigfoot related matters, Tobin says, I repeat, to any source, including all newspaper and TV reporters, corporate spies, and any and all naysayers well employed at Bigfoot Detectives Incorporated for eternity or longer. Give me a break. Say it. He peers at me over his wire rims. I say it. Good. Okay, now let me give you the orientation to the business. He taps his finger on his chin. Let's see. Well, this is where we keep, where I keep the stapler. Tobin picks it up from on top of the desk to show me, then sets it back down like I don't have eyes. The stapler remover. He holds up that too, then sets it back down next to the stapler. Okay, let me stop you there because I can see where this is going, I say. I thought this would be more about the meat and potatoes of the whole technical operation you've got happening here. We just had cereal, he says, looking at me funny. What? No, the Bigfoot stuff. I mean, what do you do, really? I'm getting to that, Tobin says. First things first, the message pad. He holds up a pad 
that has the word messages printed across the top and places it back on the desk. Are you kidding me? I put my hands on my hips. These are all very important things to know, he explains. What if a call comes in and I'm not here and you don't know where the message pad is? You mean this pad on top of this desk with the word messages on it? I grab it. Well, you know where it is now. He takes it from my hand. And uh, that's not really supposed to be moved unless there's an actual message. He puts it back in its spot. Is this a girl thing, I ask? Because I can do anything you can do. Just because I'm a girl doesn't mean the only thing I need to know is where the stapler is. I can do more than staple and unstaple. I know it, he says. The magnetic paper clip tray, he holds it up for me to see. I groan. What? If I'm going to be a partner here, you need to tell me the stories, what you do. You know, like the real Bigfoot type things that people call you about. Partner? His eyes go up. Who said partner? I don't remember saying anything about partner. I'm the founder and president of Bigfoot Detectives Incorporated. Read the sign. He picks up the crudely carved wooden sign, crudely carved wooden sign, from the desk and points to it. You will be my assistant. Assistant. I thought I made that perfectly clear. Maybe I want to be a partner. Wit Sky Bigfoot Detectives Incorporated. Has a nice ring to it. Well, first of all, it would be sky wit, if anything. And secondly, the only way I would ever make someone partner would be if that someone who I knew was planning on staying for a real long time. I don't say anything. You said you're leaving, right? He asks. Isn't that what you said? I think about it again, then pick up the stapler and, bunch of loose, and, bun, um, and, staple, and a bunch of loose papers and staple them all together. Assistant it is, I say. Oh, uh, actually... Tobin reaches for the papers in my hand. Those aren't supposed to be stapled. The green phone jingles, and Tobin dives for it, answering on the first hello. The papers go flying. Hello, Bigfoot Detectives Incorporated. This is Tobin Skyly, Detective. What Bigfoot concern can, may we help you with today? He grabs a pencil from a styrofoam cup on the desk and begins to scribble furiously on his yellow legal pad. Uh-huh, uh-huh. He says between pauses, interesting. Of course we can come right away. Yes, ma'am. Thank you for calling, Mrs. Dickerson. Goodbye. He hangs up the phone and looks at me over his yellow glasses with a big goofy smile on his face. He waves the yellow legal pad in the air. Your very first Bigfoot sighting. Are you ready? Ready for what? Only to change your life forever, he says, tightening the chin strap on his safari hat. I think about it. I guess, I say. There's been another sighting at Mrs. Dickerson's, and she needs us out there right away to lift some possible prints. You got a bike? I shake my head. That's okay. I'll give you a buck. A what? You can ride on the handlebars. Uh, I have two words for you, I say. They are no and away. He doesn't even hear me. Let's go, he hollers with excitement, grabbing the handle of the black leather case and scrambling out the door. Thanks for listening.